Plant Nutrition Introduction Organism require many organic and inorganic substances to complete their life cycle. All such substances which they take from outside constitute their nutrition. On the basis of their nutritional requirements, organisms can be classified into autotrophs and heterotrophs. Autotrophs are those organisms which manufacture their organic food by themselves and require only inorganic substance from outside. Thus the nutrition of plants is only inorganic. All green plants, except for some saprophytes and parasites, and photosynthetic bacteria are autotrophs. The heterotrophs, on the other hand, require both organic and inorganic substances from outside. All non-green plants and animals, including human beings, are heterotrophs. Autotrophic green plants obtain their nutrition from inorganic substances which are present in soil in the form of minerals, which are known as mineral elements or mineral nutrients and this nutrition is called mineral nutrition. 4.1 Essential Mineral Elements A variety of mineral elements is present in the soil but all of them are not essential for plants' growth. Besides, a particular element may be needed for the growth of one plant and may not be required at all by other plants. An essential element is defined as one without which the plant cannot complete its life cycle, or one that has a clear physiological role. Therefore, in 1939 Arnon and Stout proposed the following characters for judging the criteria of essentiality of an element in the plant, the element must be essential for normal growth and reproduction, which cannot proceed without it. The requirement of the element must be specific and cannot be replaced by another element. The requirement must be direct that is, not the result of any indirect effect e.g. for relieving toxicity caused by some other substance. Essential elements are divided into two broad categories, based on the quantity in which they are required by plants. Macro elements and micro elements. Their ionic forms are respectively called macronutrients and micronutrients. Cations may be absorbed on the surface of negatively charged clay particles. Anions, e.g., nitrate, phosphate, chloride, sulfate, borate, are held to soil particles to a lesser extent. Mineral salts dissolved in soil solution are constantly passing downwards along with percolating, gravitational, water. The phenomenon is called leaching. Leaching is more in case of anions. 1. Macronutrients, macroelements or major elements, which are required by plants in larger amounts, generally present in the plant tissues in concentrations of 1 to 10 mg per gram of dry 100. Proposed the following Matter The macronutrients include carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, potassium, calcium, magnesium. 2. Micronutrients microelements or minor elements or trace elements, which are required by plants in very small amounts, i.e., in traces, equal to or less than 0.1 mg per gram dry matter. These include iron, manganese, copper, molybdenum, zinc, boron, and chlorine. Recent research has shown that some elements, such as cobalt, vanadium, and nickel, may be essential for certain plants. The usual concentration of essential elements in higher plants according to D.W. Raines, 1976, based on the data of Stout are as follows, element percent of dry weight carbon 45 oxygen 45 hydrogen 6 nitrogen 1.5 potassium 1.0 calcium 0.5 magnesium 0.2 phosphorus 0.2 sulfur 0.1 chlorine 0.01 iron 0.01 manganese 0.005 boron 0.002 zinc 0.002 copper 0.0001 molybdenum 0.00014.2 plant analysis. 1. Ash analysis, this is the simplest method. The plant tissue is subjected to a very high temperature, 550 to 600 degrees Celsius, in an electric muffle furnace and is reduced to ash. The organic matter of the plant is completely oxidized. All carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen molecules in the tissue are converted into carbon dioxide and water, both of which escape into the atmosphere as vapors. 
Besides some nitrogen is also lost as nitrogen gas and ammonia. The plant ash left behind forms a very small proportion of plants dry weight ranging from 2 to 10 percent only. Analysis of plant ash shows that about 92 mineral elements are present in different plants. Out of these, 30 elements are present in each and every plants and rest are in one or other plants. Out of these 30 elements, 16 elements are necessary for plants and are called essential elements. The ash is chemically analyzed to determine these elements. 2. Solution Culture, Hydroponics In this method plants are grown in nutrient solutions containing only desired elements. To determine the essentiality of an element for a particular plant, it is grown in a nutrient medium that lacks or is deficient in this element. If the plant grows normally, it indicates that the element is not essential. However, if the plant shows deficiency symptoms then it indicates that the element is essential for that particular plant. The growing of plants with their roots in dilute solutions of mineral salts instead of soil led to increased understanding of plant nutrition. This cultivation of plants by placing the roots in nutrient solution is called hydroponics. Probably the first recorded use of soilless culture was by Woodward in 1699. In early 19th century, plants were grown with their roots immersed in water solutions with inorganic salts alone, without the addition of soil or organic matter. By 1860, the culture solution technique was modernized by Sachs and he showed the essentiality of nitrogen for plant growth. Another significant worker for studying the essentiality of elements was Knopp, 1865. The method of growing plants in aqueous nutrient solutions as employed by Sachs and Knopp is used experimentally and commercially today and known as hydroponic culture. The nutrient solution composition proposed by Knopp, 1865, and Arnon and Hoagland's, 1940, are commonly used. Arnon and Hoagland's nutrient medium has the advantage, that it contains micronutrients also. Iron was added in the form of ferrous sulfate which often precipitated out. Nowadays a chelating agent Na2EDDA, disodium salt of ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid. EDDA is a buffer which is used in tissue cultures, is added. Hydroponics or soilless culture helps in knowing, I, the essentiality of mineral element. 2. The deficiency symptoms developed due to non-availability of particular nutrient. 3. Toxicity to plant when element is present in excess. 4. Possible interaction among different elements present in plant. V. The role of essential element in the metabolism of plant. 3. Solid medium culture. In this method either sand or crushed quartz is used as a rooting medium and nutrient solution is added to it. The nutrient medium is provided by one of the following methods. I. Drip culture. It is done by dripping over the surface. 2. Slop culture. It is done by having the medium over the surface. 3. Sub-irrigation. Here the solution is forced up from the bottom of the container. 4.3 Major Role of Nutrients Various elements perform the following major role in the plants. 1. Construction of the plant body. The elements particularly C, H, and O construct the plant body by entering into the constitution of cell wall and protoplasm. They are, therefore, referred to as framework elements. Besides, these, C, H, and O, N, P, and S also enter in the constitution of protoplasm. They are described as protoplasmic elements. 2. Maintenance of osmotic pressure. Various minerals present in the cell sap in organic or inorganic form maintain the osmotic pressure of the cell. 3. Maintenance of permeability of cytomembranes, the minerals, particularly Ca++, K and, and Na and maintain the permeability of cytomembranes. 4. Influence the pH of the cell sap, different cations and anions influence on the pH of the cell sap. 5. Catalysis of biochemical reaction, several elements particularly Fe, Ca, Mg, Mn, Zn, Cu, Cl act as metallic catalyst in biochemical reactions. 6. Toxic effects, 
minerals like Cu, as, etc. impart toxic effect on the protoplasm under specific conditions. 7. Balancing function, some minerals or their salts act against the harmful effect of the other nutrients, thus balancing each other. 4.4 Specific role of macronutrients. The role of different elements is described below, 1 carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, these three elements, though can not be categorized as mineral elements, are indispensable for plant growth. These are also called framework elements. Carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen together constitute about 94% of the total dry weight of the plant. Carbon is obtained from the carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere. It is essential for carbohydrate and fat synthesis. Hydrogen and oxygen would be obtained from water which is absorbed by the plants from the soil. Some amount of oxygen is also absorbed from the atmosphere. 2. Nitrogen, I, source, the chief source of nitrogen for green plants is the soil. It is absorbed mainly in the form of nitrate ions, 3 no. The major sources of nitrate for the plants are sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, ammonium nitrate, and calcium nitrate. Under suitable conditions, ammonium ions, 4NH may substitute for nitrate ions, being easily absorbed by plants. Ordinary green plants cannot utilize elemental nitrogen which constitutes about 79% of the air. It is also trapped by nitrogen-fixing bacteria which live symbiotically in root nodules of the plants. 2. Functions Nitrogen is an essential constituent of proteins, nucleic acids, vitamins, and many other organic molecules as chlorophyll. Nitrogen is also present in various hormones, coenzymes and ATP etc. It plays an important role in protein synthesis, respiration, growth, and in almost all metabolic reactions. 3. Deficiency Symptoms the symptoms of nitrogen deficiency are as follows, a. Impaired growth, b. Yellowing of leaves due to loss of chlorophyll, i.e., chlorosis, c. Development of anthocyanin pigmentation in veins, sometimes in petioles and stems, d. Delayed or complete suppression of flowering and fruiting. Excessive supply of nitrogen produces following symptoms, a. Increased formation of dark green leaves b. Poor development of root system. c. Delayed flowering and seed formation. 3. Phosphorus, i. Source, phosphorus is present in the soil in two general forms, organic and inorganic. Plants do not absorb organic phosphorus, either from the solid or solution phase of soil. However, organic compounds are decomposed and phosphorus is made available to plants in inorganic form. Soil solution contains phosphorus in inorganic forms as the phosphate ions 42PO and 24HPO. When pH is low phosphate ions are present in the form of 42POH. When pH is high, phosphate ions are represented in 24HPO. 2. Functions A. Phosphorus is present abundantly in the growing and storage organs such as fruits and seeds. It promotes healthy root growth and fruit ripening by helping translocation of carbohydrates. b. It is present in plasma membrane, nucleic acid, nucleotides, many coenzymes and organic molecules as ATP. c. Phosphorus plays an indispensable role in energy metabolism i.e., hydrolysis of pyrophosphate and various organic phosphate bonds being used to drive chemical reactions. Thus it is required for all phosphorylation reactions. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Leaves become dark green or purplish. B. Sometimes development of anthocyanin pigmentation occurs in veins which may become necrotic. Necrosis is defined as localized death of cells. C. Premature fall of leaves. D. Decreased cambial activity resulting in poor development of vascular bundles. E root and shoot growth is checked. F. Prolonged dormancy. G. Sickle leaf disease. 4. Sulfur, I. Source, sulfur is present as sulfate 24 so in mineral fraction of soil. It is also found in FES and FES2 forms, 
which are not available to plants. In industrialized areas, atmospheric sulfur dioxide, 2 so and sulfur trioxide 3, so, in low concentration, may be important sources of sulfur nutrition. 2. Functions, a. Sulfur is a constituent of amino acids like cysteine, cysteine, and methionine, vitamins like biotin and thiamine, and coenzyme A, B, it increases the nodule formation in the roots of leguminous plants. It favors soluble organic nitrogen and there is decrease in the quantity of soluble nitrogen with its increase. C, the characteristic smell of mustard, onion, and garlic is due to the presence of sulfur in their volatile oils. D, Sulfur in plants is required in stem and root tips and young leaves. It is remobilis during senescence. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Leaves remain small and turn pale green i.e., symptoms of chlorosis. Chlorosis affects young leaves more because of immobile property of the sulfur. The young leaves develop orange, red or purple pigment. B. Leaf tips and margins roll downwards and inwards e.g., tobacco, tea, and tomato. C. Premature leaf fall. D. Delayed flowering and fruiting. E. Apical growth is retarded whereas premature development of lateral buds starts. F. The tea yellow disease is caused in tea plants. G. Decrease in stroma lamellae and increase in grana stacking. H. Increase in starch and sucrose accumulation and decrease in reducing sugars. 5. Potassium, I, source, source of KN to the plants is inorganic compounds like potassium sulfate, potassium nitrate, etc. Potassium is usually present in sufficient amount in clay soils, where it is firmly bound, largely as an exchangeable base. It is prevalent cation in plants and may be involved in the maintenance of ionic balance in cells. It contains approximately 0.3 to 6% of whole plant. In seeds, it is found in less amount. 2. Functions A. It differs from all other macronutrients in not being a constituent of any metabolically important compound. B. It is the only monovalent cation essential for the plants. C. It acts as an activator of several enzymes including DNA polymerase. D. It is essential for the translocation of photosynthates, opening and closing of stomata, phosphorylation, synthesis of nucleic acid and chlorophyll. It takes part in the formation of cell membrane and it is also responsible for maintenance of turgidity of cells. It is considered that whole of potassium in plant is found in soluble form and most of it is contained in cell sap and cytoplasm. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Modeled chlorosis followed by the development of necrotic areas at the tips and margins of the leaves. B. K and deficiency inhibits protein synthesis and photosynthesis. At the same time, it increases the rate of respiration. C. The internodes become shorter and root system is adversely affected. D. The color of leaves may turn bluish green. E. Widespread blackening or scorching of leaves may occur as a result of increased tyrosinase activity. F. Rosette or bushy habit of growth may be seen in plants. G. Reduction of stem growth, weakening of stem. H. Lowered resistance to pathogens. Destruction of pith cells of tomato and increased differentiation of phloem elements. 6. Calcium, I. Source. The element is abundant in most soils and plants under natural conditions are seldom deficient in it. It is absorbed by the plants in the form of 2Ca from calcium carbonate etc. It occurs abundantly in a non-exchangeable form such as anorthite, 822 OSI col. Much of the exchangeable calcium of the soil is absorbed onto the surface of clay micelle. 2. Functions, A. It is necessary for formation of middle lamella of plants where it occurs as calcium pectate. B. It is necessary for the growth of apical meristem and root hair formation. C. It acts as activator of several enzymes, e.g., ATPase, succinic dehydrogenase, adenylate kinase, etc. D. Along with Na and NK and it maintains the permeability of plasma membrane. 
e. it is involved in the organization of spindle fibers during mitosis. f. it antagonizes the toxic effects of Na and NMG++. It is essential for fat metabolism, carbohydrate metabolism, nitrate assimilation, and binding of nucleic acids with proteins. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Ultimate death of meristems which are found in shoot, leaf, and root tips. B. Chlorosis along the margins of young leaves, later on they become necrotic. C. Distortion in leaf shape. D. Roots poorly developed or may become gelatinous. E. Young leaves show malformation and leaf tips becomes hooked. F. Its deficiency checks flowering and causes the flowers to fall early. 7. Magnesium. I. Source. Magnesium occurs in the soil in the form of magnesite, MgCO3, dolomite, MgCO3, CaCO3, magnesium sulfate, MgSO4, and as silicates. It is absorbed from the soil in the form of exchangeable cation, ions, Mg++. It is easily leached and thus become deficient in sandy soils during rainy season. 2. Functions A. It is an important constituent of chlorophyll. B. It is present in the middle lamella in the form of magnesium pectate. C. It plays an important role in the metabolism of carbohydrates, lipids, and phosphorus. D. It acts as activator of several enzymes. E. It is required for binding the larger and smaller subunits of ribosomes during protein synthesis. F. It is readily mobile and when its deficiency occurs, it is apparently transferred from older to younger tissues, where it can be neutralized in growth processes. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Intervenal chlorosis followed by anthocyanin pigmentation, eventually necrotic spots appear on the leaves. As magnesium is easily transported within the plant body, the deficiency symptoms first appear in the mature leaves followed by the younger leaves at a later stage. B. Stems become hard and woody, and turn yellowish-green. C. Depression of internal phloem and extensive development of chlorenchyma. 4.5 Specific Role of Micronutrients 1. Iron, I, source, it is present in the form of oxides in the soil. It is absorbed by the plants in ferric as well as ferrous state but metabolically it is active in ferrous state. Its requirement is intermediate between macro and micronutrients. Therefore, sometimes it is also considered as a macronutrient. 2. Functions A. Iron is a structural component of ferredoxin, flavoproteins, iron proferin proteins, cytochromes, peroxidases, catalases, etc. B. It plays important roles in energy conversion reactions of photosynthesis, phosphorylation, and respiration. C. It acts as activator of nitrate reductase and aconitase. D. Although iron is not a component of the chlorophyll molecules, it is essential for the synthesis of chlorophyll. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. Chlorosis particularly in younger leaves, the mature leaves remain unaffected. B. It inhibits chloroplast formation due to inhibition of protein synthesis. C. Stalks remain short and slender. D. Extensive intervenal white chlorosis in leaves. E. It may develop necrosis aerobic respiration severely affected. F. In extreme deficiency scorching of leaf margins and tips may occur. 2. Manganese. I. Source. Like iron, the oxide forms of manganese are common in soil. However, manganese dioxide, highly oxidized form, is not easily available to plants. It is absorbed from the soil in bivalent form, Mn++. Increased acidity leads to increase in solubility of manganese. In strong acidic soils, manganese may be present in toxic concentrations. Oxidizing bacteria in soils render manganese unavailable to plants at pH ranging from 6.5 to 7.8. 2. Functions A. It acts as activator of enzymes of respiration, malic dehydrogenase and oxalosuccinic decarboxylase, and nitrogen metabolism, 
nitrite reductase. B. It is essential for the synthesis of chlorophyll. C. It is required in photosynthesis during photolysis of water. D. It decreases the solubility of iron by oxidation. Hence, abundance of manganese can lead to iron deficiency in plants. 3. Deficiency symptoms A. Chlorosis, intervenal, and necrosis of leaves. B. Chloroplasts lose chlorophyll, turn yellow green, vacuolated, and finally perish. C. Root system is poorly developed. D. Formation of grains is badly affected. E. Gray spot disease in oat appears due to the deficiency of manganese, which leads to total failure of crop. F. Marsh spots in seeds of pea. G. Deficiency symptoms develop in older leaves. 3. Copper, I. Source, copper occurs in almost every type of soil in the form of complex organic compounds. A very small amount of copper is found dissolved in the soil solution. The bivalent copper cation Cu2 plus is available in plants in exchangeable forms. It is found in natural deposits of chalcopyrite, QFES2. 2. Functions, A. It activates many enzymes and is a component of phenolases, ascorbic acid oxidase, tyrosinase, cytochrome oxidase. B. Copper is a constituent of plasticianin, hence plays a role in photophosphorylation. C. It also maintains carbohydrate nitrogen balance. 3. Deficiency symptoms A. Both vegetative and reproductive growth are reduced. B. The most common symptoms of copper deficiency include a disease of fruit trees called exanthema in which trees start yielding gums on bark and reclamation of crop plants, found in cereals and legumes. C. It also causes necrosis of the tip of the young leaves, e.g., citrus. The disease is called dieback. D. Carbon dioxide absorption is decreased in copper deficient trees. E. Wilting of entire plant occurs under acute shortage. F. Grain formation is more severely restricted than vegetative growth. 4. Molybdenum, I. Source, molybdenum occurs in the soil in three forms, dissolved, exchangeable and non-exchangeable forms. It is available to the plants mostly as molybdate ions. It is required in extremely small quantities by plants. It is found relatively in higher concentration in mineral oil and coal ashes. 2. Functions A. Its most important function is in nitrogen fixation because it is an activator of nitrate reductase. B. It is required for the synthesis of ascorbic acid. C. It acts as activator of some dehydrogenases and phosphatases. Deficiency symptoms A. Mottled chlorosis is caused in the older leaves as in nitrogen deficiency, but unlike nitrogen deficient plants, the cotyledons stay healthy and green. B. It is also known to inhibit flowering, if they develop, they fall before fruit setting. C. It leads to drop in concentration of ascorbic acid. D. Its deficiency causes whiptail disease in cauliflower and cabbage. The leaves first show an intervenal mottling and the leaf margins may become gray and flaccid and finally brown. 5. Zinc, I, source, zinc occurs in the soil in the form of ferromagnesian minerals like magnetite, biotite, and hornblende. When weathering of these minerals takes place, zinc is liberated in bivalent Zn2 plus form. Increase in soil pH decreases the availability of zinc. Bivalent form of zinc, Zn++, is exchangeable and is readily available in the soil. Plants require this mineral only in traces and its higher concentrations are highly toxic. 2. Functions, A. It is required for the synthesis of tryptophan which is a precursor of indole acetic acid and auxin. B. It is a constituent of enzymes like carbonic anhydrase, hexokinase, alcohol dehydrogenase, lactic dehydrogenase and carboxypeptidase. C. It is required for metabolism of phosphorus and carbohydrates. D. Zinc also appears to play an important role in protein synthesis because in its absence there is substantial increase in soluble nitrogenous compounds. 
3. Deficiency Symptoms A. The first symptom appears in the form of intervenal chlorosis of the older leaves, starting at the tips and the margins. B. Growth becomes stunted due to formation of smaller leaves and shortened internodes. Reduced stem growth is due to less synthesis of auxin. C. The leaves become distorted and sickle-shaped and get clustered to form rosettes. This effect is known as little leaf disease. D. In maize, zinc deficiency produces white bud disease which leads to greatly reduced flowering and fruiting as well as poorly differentiated root growth. E. Its deficiency causes cara disease of rice and mottled leaf of apple, citrus, and walnut. 6. Boron, I. Source, boron is present in the soil in very small amounts. It appears in exchangeable soluble and non-exchangeable forms in the soil 33BO or 274OB. It occurs in highly complex forms such as borosilicates, boric acids, and calcium and manganese borates. It is absorbed from the soil as boric acid, 33 BOH and tetraborate anions. Its calcium and magnesium salts are soluble. Its availability to plant decreases with increase in pH. 2. Functions A. It facilitates the translocation of sugars. B. It is involved in the formation of pectin. C. It is also required for flowering, fruiting, photosynthesis and nitrogen metabolism. D. Boron is required for uptake and utilization of Ca2+, pollen germination, seed germination and cell differentiation. E. It regulates cellular differentiation and development. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. The first major symptom of boron deficiency is the death of shoot tip because boron is needed for DNA synthesis. B. Generally flowers are not formed and the root growth is stunted. C. The leaves develop a thick coppery texture, they curve and become brittle. D. Some of the physiological diseases caused due to boron deficiency are internal cork of apple, top rot of tobacco, crack stem of celery, browning of cauliflower water core of turnip, hard fruit of citrus and hard rot of sugar beets and marigold. These diseases can be cured by application of small doses of sodium tetraborate in the soil. E. Fruits when affected are severely deformed and useless. F. Its deficiency checks the cell's division of cambium but continues cell elongation. 7. Chlorine. I. Source. It is absorbed from the soil as chloride ions. It is required in very small amounts and almost all types of soils contain enough chlorine for the plants. Hence, it is rarely supplied as fertilizer. 2. Functions A. It is required for photolysis of water during photosynthesis in photosystem 2. B. In tobacco, it increases water volume inside the cell and also regulates carbohydrate metabolism. C. With Na and K, chlorine helps in determining solute concentration and anion cation balance in the cells. D. It is essential for oxygen evolution in photosynthesis. 3. Deficiency Symptoms A. The deficiency symptoms of chlorine consist of wilted leaves which later become chlorotic and finally attain a bronze color. B. Roots become stunted or thickened and club-shaped and fruiting is reduced. C. Photosynthesis is also inhibited. 4.6 Mechanism of Absorption of Mineral Elements Plants absorb the minerals from the soil and translocate them to other parts of the body. Soil serves as a main source of mineral salts in which clay crystals with a central nucleus is called micelle. The micelles are negatively charged. To maintain the balance, they hold positively charged ions on their surface. When this balance is disturbed by salt absorption, the equilibrium is again restored by transferring some of the absorbed ions into the solution. The movement of ions is called as flux. The movement of ions into the cell is called influx and outward migration of ions is known as efflux. Various theories have been proposed to explain the mechanism of mineral salt absorption and can be placed under the following two categories. 1. Passive absorption. 2. Active absorption. 1. Passive absorption. Absorption of ions without the use of metabolic energy is known as passive absorption. 
This type of absorption is carried out by purely physical forces. In most of the cases, the movement of mineral ions into root occurs by diffusion. Diffusion of molecules is their net movement down a free energy or chemical potential gradient. The rate of diffusion varies with the chemical potential gradient or the difference in activity, essentially equivalent to concentration, across the diffusion distance. Briggs and Robertson, 1957, demonstrated the passive absorption of ions by root system. They showed, mineral salt absorption is not affected by temperature and metabolic inhibitors. Rapid uptake of ions occurs when plant tissues are transferred from a medium of low concentration to high concentration. Some of the important theories explaining the mechanism of passive absorption of minerals are given below, i. Mass flow hypothesis, according to Heilmo, 1953, 1955, the ion absorption increases with increase in transpiration. The ions have been considered to move in a mass flow with water from the soil solution through the root and eventually to the chute. The theory was supported by Kramer, 1956, Russell and Barber, 1960, etc. Later, Lapushinsky, 1960, using radioactive P32 and Ca45, has supported this experiment. 2. Simple diffusion hypothesis According to this hypothesis, if the concentration of solutes inside the plant is lower than the soil, the mineral ions are thought to migrate into the root by simple diffusion. As a result, a state of equilibrium is reached. The part of plant cell or tissue that permits free diffusion is sometimes called outer space. The apparent volume that accommodates these ions has been referred to by some workers as apparent free space. In the model of plasma membrane proposed by Danielli and Davs in 1935, there are pores of 7A diameter through which ions can diffuse into the cytoplasm. However, these pores are thought to be unstable in the fluid mosaic model. The accumulation of ions in the cell against concentration gradient cannot be explained by this concept. 3. Facilitated diffusion hypothesis, according to this concept, the ions are transported across the membrane by a carrier protein. When the ions enter the cell through protein channels and not through the lipid layer the phenomenon is called facilitated diffusion. The ions combine with the carrier before they move to and fro across the membrane by thermal diffusion. In bacteria this action is performed by certain antibiotics, which are small polypeptide units. These antibiotics are called ionophores. They transport cations into the cell. In this phenomenon there is no participation of metabolic energy. 4. Ion exchange hypothesis. According to this view the ions adsorbed to the cell surface are exchanged from the external medium. A cation is exchanged for a cation and anion for anion. If a particular ion is absorbed by the plant, in exchange it offers H and or O ions which are made available by the dissociation of water molecule. There are two theories to explain the mechanism of ion exchange. A. Contact exchange theory. According to this theory, ions are not completely static, they are always oscillating around their absorption surface and when the oscillation volume of the ions on the roots and on the colloidal particles overlap each other, ion exchange occurs. An equilibrium is maintained between the dissolved fractions as any depletion in the soil solution is covered by movement of ions. b. Carbonic acid exchange theory, in this case, CO2 released by roots during respiration reacts with water to produce carbonic acid which dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. Hydrogen ion exchanges itself with the cations adsorbed on the colloidal particles and the bicarbonate ions release the adsorbed anions to supply both anions and cations nearby. V. Donnan equilibrium, this mechanism, given by F. G. Donnan, 1927, takes into account the effect of non-diffusible ions, which may be present on one side of the membrane. Unlike diffusible ions, the membrane is not permeable to non-diffusible ions. Such ions are termed as fixed ions. They may be anions or cations. In a system, in which there are no fixed ions, there are equal number of anions and cations on both sides of the membrane at equilibrium. But in Donnan equilibrium, 
In order to balance the charge of the fixed ions, say anions, more ions of the other charge, say cations, would be required. Mathematically, the Donnan equilibrium may be represented by following equation, OOIIACAC here, IC equals cations inside, OC equals cations outside, IA equals anions inside, OA equals anions outside, K here, IC equals cations inside ions negative outside ions negative outside a ions positive inside ions negative outside ions let us denote these indiffusible anions as r which are electrically balanced by an equal amount of cations say k plus if the anion cl enters the cell due to diffusion gradient it is accompanied by an equal amount of cations the absorption of this cation may be against concentration gradient the equilibrium so achieved is called Donnan equilibrium. 2. Active absorption. Generally, the lipid protein membrane of a cell is largely permeable to free ions. The energy is considered to be involved in the transport of such free ions across the membrane. The absorption of ions, involving use of metabolic energy, is called active absorption. Energy used in these mechanisms comes from metabolic activities especially respiration. Mineral absorption is mainly active process. Hoagland, 1944, indicated active ion absorption and their, ions, accumulation against concentration gradient in green algae Nitella and Valonia. Following evidences show the involvement of metabolic energy in the absorption of mineral salts, higher rate of respiration increases the salt accumulation inside the cell. Respiratory inhibitors check the process of salt uptake. By decreasing oxygen content in the medium, the salt absorption is also decreased. Active transport is necessary for living cells because certain substances must be concentrated and others must be excluded. Active uptake of minerals by roots mainly depends on availability of oxygen. Depending upon the nature of the carrier and participation of metabolic energy, Several theories are proposed to explain the mechanism of active absorption. Some of these are discussed below. I. Carrier concept. This concept was proposed by Van den Honert, 1937. The space in a cell or tissue where mineral ions enter by the usage of metabolic energy is called inner space. The boundaries of outer and inner spaces are not well defined. Perhaps the two are separated by the plasma membrane. According to this concept there are separate carriers for cations and fixed anions. A carrier forms an ion carrier complex on the outer surface of the membrane. This complex breaks up and releases the ion into the inner space and this release is perhaps mediated by the enzyme phosphatase. The inactivated carrier is again activated by the enzyme kinase and in this process an ADP is used up. ADP molecule combine with carrier molecules and allow passage of substances against concentration gradient. The activated carrier again accepts new ions and the entire cycle is repeated. Carrier asterisk plus ion. Ed. Inactivate carrier and ADP kinase. Activated. 2. Cytochrome. Pump hypothesis. This theory was proposed by Lundy Gard. 1950. 1954. According to this explanation only anions are absorbed actively, i.e., anion uptake requires energy and the absorption of cations does not require energy, i.e., they are absorbed passively. At the outer surface of the membrane, the cytochrome undergoes oxidation and loses one electron and in exchange picks up an anion. This is then transported to the inner side of the membrane through to the cytochrome chain and on the inner surface of the membrane the anion is released and the cytochrome gets reduced by the action of dehydrogenase involved in respiration. The cations move passively along the electrical gradient created by the accumulation of anions at the inner surface of the membrane. The evidence in favor of lundy gardas hypothesis is that the respiration increased when a plant is transferred from water to salt solution. The increased respiration was called salt respiration or anion respiration. This theory was criticized on the following grounds. A. It is applicable to absorption of anions only. B. It fails to explain selective absorption of ions. C. 
it has been observed that even cations can stimulate respiration. D. ETS is poorly developed in anaerobically respiring forms. 3. Protein lecithin carrier concept, Bennett Clark, 1956, proposed that the carrier could be some amphoteric molecule which can carry anions as well as plasma membranes. Cations. He suggested it to be a membrane bound protein which is conjugated with a phosphatide called as lecithin. Lecithin functions as a carrier. According to this theory, the phosphate group in the phosphatide acts as the cation binding site and choline acts as the anion binding site. During transport, ions are picked up by lecithin to forms an ion lecithin complex. The ions are released on the inner surface of the membrane due to hydrolysis of lecithin by the enzyme lecithinase into phosphatidic acid and choline. Lecithin is resynthesized from these components in the presence of enzyme choline acetylase and choline esterase which requires ADP. Goldacre, 1952 proposed a mechanism of ion transport where contractile proteins act as ion carrier. They bind ions in unfolded condition on the outer face of the membrane and then contract releasing the ion into the cell and again become unfolded. The energy for this folding and unfolding is provided by ATP. In hydrophytic plants, water and salts are absorbed by outer layer of plants. 4.7 Factors Affecting Mineral Absorption The process of mineral absorption is influenced by the following factors, 1. Temperature, the rate of absorption of salts and minerals is directly proportional to temperature. But it holds good only within a narrow range. The absorption of mineral ions is inhibited when the temperature has reached its maximum limit, perhaps due to denaturing of enzymes. 2. Light the effects of light on mineral absorption are indirect and are mainly due to the effect of light on transpiration and photosynthesis. Transpiration is responsible for mass flow and photosynthesis provides energy and oxygen. When there is sufficient light, more photosynthesis occurs. As a result more food energy becomes available and salt uptake increases. 3. Oxygen a deficiency of O2 always causes a corresponding decrease in the rate of mineral absorption. It is probably due to unavailability of ADP. The increased oxygen tension helps in increased uptake of salts. 4. pH, it affects the rate of mineral absorption by regulating the availability of ions in the medium. At normal physiological pH monovalent ions are absorbed more rapidly whereas alkaline pH favors the absorption of bivalent and trivalent ions. 5. Interaction with other minerals, the absorption of one type of ions is affected by other type. The absorption of K and is affected by Ca++, Mg++ and other polyvalent ions. It is probably due to competition for binding sites on the carrier. However, the uptake of K and N B R becomes possible in presence of C A plus plus ions. There is mutual competition in the absorption of K, R B, and C S ions. 6. Growth. A proper growth causes increase in surface area, number of cells and in the number of binding sites for the mineral ion. As a result, mineral absorption is enhanced. 4.8 Mineral Translocation P. R. Stout and D. R. Hoagland, 1939, proved that mineral salts are translocated through xylem. After absorption of minerals by root, ions are able to reach xylem by two pathways. I. Apoplast, 2. Simplost in apoplast pathway, inflow of water takes place from the cell to cell through spaces between cell wall polysaccharides. Ions thus are able to move from cell wall of epidermis to cell walls of various cells in cortex, cytoplasm of endodermis, cell wall of pericycle and finally into xylem. In simplost pathway, ions move through cytoplasm of epidermis and finally move through cytoplasm of cortex, endodermis, pericycle through plasmodesmata and finally into xylem. Minerals in xylem are carried along with water to other parts of the plant along transpiration stream. Minerals reaching leaves take part in assimilation of organic compounds and then transported to other parts of the plant through phloem. 4.9 Nitrogen Nutrition in Plants Nitrogen is an essential constituent of protoplasm. 
nitrogen is the component of amino acids, proteins, enzymes, nucleotides, and nucleic acids. Nitrogen is picked up as inorganic compound and is changed into organic form by plants and some prokaryotes. Though atmosphere contains 79% of nitrogen in gaseous state, yet animals cannot use it directly. Nitrogen is a highly inert gas and it is energetically difficult for most of the living organisms, including the higher plants, to obtain it directly for their use. It must be fixed, i.e., combined with other elements such as C, H, and O, to form nitrates, nitrites, ammonium salts, etc. before it is absorbed and utilized by the plants. Higher plants generally utilize the oxidized forms such as nitrate, 3 NO and nitrite, 2 NO or the reduced form, 4 NH of nitrogen which is made available by a variety of nitrogen fixers. Nitrogen can be fixed by three methods, process of nitrogen fixation on the basis of agency through which the nitrogen is fixed the process is divided into two types, I, atmospheric nitrogen fixation, by photochemical and electrochemical reactions, oxygen combines with nitrogen to form oxides of nitrogen. Now they get dissolved in water and combine with other salts to produce nitrates. 2. Biological nitrogen fixation, some blue-green algae, anabina, nostoc, symbiotic bacteria, rhizobium, and free-living bacteria, azotobacter, pick up atmospheric nitrogen, reduce it to ammonia, combines with organic acid to form amino acid. 3. Industrial nitrogen fixation, Nitrogen and hydrogen combines to form ammonia industrially, under pressure and temperature. 1. Physical nitrogen fixation, out of total nitrogen fixed by natural agencies approximately 10% of this occurs due to physical processes such as lightning, i.e., electric discharge, thunderstorms and atmospheric pollution. Due to lightning and thundering of clouds, N2 and O2 of the air react to form nitric oxide, no. The nitric oxide is further oxidized with the help of O2 to form nitrogen peroxide, NO2. Noon 2 lightning NO2 combines with H2O to form nitrous acid, HNO2, and nitric acid, HNO3. The acid falls along with rain water. Now it acts with alkaline radicals to form water-soluble 3 NO, nitrates, and 2 NO, nitrites. The nitrates are soluble in water and are directly absorbed by the plants. 2. Biological nitrogen fixation, the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into inorganic or organic usable forms through the agency of living organisms is called biological nitrogen fixation. The process is carried by two main types of microorganisms, those which are free-living or asymbiotic and those which live in close symbiotic association of with other plants. I. Asymbiotic biological nitrogen fixation, this is done by many aerobic and anaerobic bacteria, cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, and some fungi e.g., a, free-living bacteria aerobic, azotobacter anaerobic, clostridium photosynthetic, chlorobium chemosynthetic thiobacillus, b, cyanobacteria, blue-green algae, e.g., anabina, nostoc, tolipothrix cylindrospermum, colithrix, and allosera, etc., c., free-living fungi, e.g., yeast cells, and polyularia. 2. Symbiotic biological nitrogen fixation, symbiotic bacteria are found in the root nodules of the members of family leguminosae. The best-known nitrogen-fixing symbiotic bacterium is Rhizobium leguminosarum, Bacillus radicicola. Primary Members of the family leguminosae such as beans, gram, groundnut, and soybean etc. on their secondary, tertiary and sometimes primary roots bear small nodule-like swellings. Rhizobium penetrates to the cortex of root through infection thread. Simultaneously cortical cells or root are stimulated to divide more vigorously to form nodules on the root. Neither bacterium nor plant alone can fix nitrogen in such cases. Nitrogen fixation is actually the outcome of symbiotic relationship between the two. When a section of root nodules is observed the presence of a pigment, like hemoglobin is seen to impart pinkish color to it. 
This pigment is closely related to hemoglobin and helpful in creating optimal condition for nitrogen fixation. Like hemoglobin, leg hemoglobin is an oxygen scavenger. Fixation of nitrogen is done with the help of enzyme nitrogenase, which functions under anaerobic conditions. Leg hemoglobin combines with oxygen and protects nitrogenase. Symbiotic bacteria have also been found to occur in root nodules of casuarina, cycas, alnus, etc. Leaf nodules develop in some members of family Rubiaceae, the bacteria being Mycobacterium. Some cyanobacteria also have symbiotic association with plants e.g., lichens, anthocerus, a liverwort, and azala, a water fern. Mechanism of Biological Nitrogen Fixation it is believed that nitrogen is bound to the enzyme surface and is not released until it is completely reduced to ammonia. Nitrogen bound to the enzyme surface is reduced in stepwise reaction before N, N bond is ruptured. Several schemes incorporating such idea have been proposed and Burris, 1966, accepts that the total reduction of nitrogen occurs on an enzyme complex, nitrogenase, without release of intermediates less reduced than ammonia. The enzyme complex nitrogenase consists of two subunits a non-heme iron protein commonly called Fe protein, or dinitrogen reductase, component I, an iron molybdenum protein called MO Fe protein, or dinitrogenase, component II, according to Burris, 1966, hypothesis for nitrogen fixation suggesting the function of ATP and ferredoxin at each step in the reduction of nitrogen. The pretty function of ATP donor is furnished by pyruvate which also acts as electron donor for N2 reduction as well. Pyruvate on one hand acts as ATP donor while on other hand it supplies hydrogen ions and electrons for nitrogen reduction via NADH2 and ferredoxin. The nitrogenase enzyme requires 16 ATP molecules, 8 hydrogen ions and 8 electrons to reduce one molecule of nitrogen to 2 NH3 molecules. Explaining the mechanism of nitrogenase activity, it's now believed that electrons are transferred from the reducing agent, ferredoxin, flavoprotein, or dithionide, to complex of MGATP and feprotein, component 2. From here electrons flow to MOFA protein, component I, and then to substrate, nitrogen, which is finally reduced, to NH3. Flavidoxin or ferredoxin or dithamite Fe protein, reduced, 2, Mg2 plus ADP MO Fe protein, reduced, NNCHCH flavidoxin or ferredoxin Fe protein, oxidized, 2, Mg2 plus ADP MO Fe protein, oxidized, 2H plus 2NH3CH2 equals CH2H2 in most diazotrophs, and 2 fixing organisms. Ferredoxin and flavidoxin are probably the natural electron carriers for the reduction of Fe protein. The reduced Fe protein binds to MGATP, Mg2 plus ADP, creating a complex with MO Fe protein. Dissociation of two proteins occur between electron transfer events. The oxidized Fe protein dissociates and becomes reduced again which recombines randomly with another nitrogenase until all the electrons needed for reduction of substrate e.g. 8 for N2, are accumulated. Apart from H+, substrates such as NN or HCCH are believed to be bound to the same site in MOFA protein, component I. The ammonia formed in biological nitrogen fixation is not liberated. It is highly toxic and is immediately converted into amino acids. Ammonia and ketoglutarate and NADHASCD hydrogen glutamate and NAD++ H2O. The amino acids are transported through phloem to other parts of the plant. Ammonification and nitrification thus symbiotic nitrogen fixing organisms give a part of their fixed nitrogen to the host in return for carbohydrate food and shelter. But the free living non-symbiotic nitrogen fixing organisms do not enrich the soil immediately. It is only after their death that the fixed nitrogen enters the cyclic pool by the two steps namely the ammonification and nitrification. Ammonification, the nitrogenous organic compounds in the dead bodies of plants and animals are converted into ammonia or ammonium ions in the soil. This is carried out by ammonifying bacteria. 
Ammonia is toxic to the plants but ammonium ions can be safely absorbed by the higher plants. Nitrification, once ammonia has been produced it is converted into nitrates by nitrifying activities and process is called nitrification. Soil bacteria such as Nitrosomonas and Nitrosococcus convert ammonia into nitrite, to no ions. Ano ONH cause Nitrosococcus nitrosamin. Nitrites are then oxidized to nitrates by nitrobacter. 300 and The nitrifying bacteria are chemoautotrophs and are benefited by utilizing energy released in oxidation, which is used in chemosynthesis. At soil temperatures 30 degrees Celsius, 35 degrees Celsius in alkaline soils and with sufficient moisture and aeration, the activity of aminifying and nitrifying bacteria is found to be maximum. Some bacteria such as Thiobacillus denitrificans, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Micrococcus denitrificans also occur in the soil which convert the nitrate and ammonia into atmospheric free elemental nitrogen. Such bacteria are called denitrifying bacteria and the process is called denitrification. These bacteria act very well in soil where there is more water and less oxygen and there are high level of the carbohydrate. Nitrate assimilation in plants Nitrate is the most important source of nitrogen for the plants but it cannot be used as such. It is first reduced to ammonia and then incorporated into organic compounds. The process of nitrate reduction to ammonia occurs in the following steps. Nitrate nitrite hyponitrate hydroxylamine ammonia reduction of nitrate to nitrites. First the nitrate is reduced to nitrite by an enzyme called nitrate reductase. The reductase enzyme is a flavoprotein and contains fat, flavin adenine dinucleotide, as prosthetic group which receives hydrogen from reduced NADP or NAD. Molybdenum in enzyme serves as electron carrier. Reduction of nitrites, the nitrite ions are reduced to ammonia by an enzyme called nitrite reductase. This change occurs in leaves in the presence of light more rapidly and in dark with lesser speed. This is due to the reducing power of reaction from photochemical splitting of water. Nitrite reductase does not need molybdenum but may require the presence of iron and copper. NADH and NADF act as hydrogen donors. Application of fertilizers Application of fertilizers most of the soil usually contains sufficient amounts of essential mineral elements for the better crop production. Some of them are, however, deficient in certain elements. These elements are required to be supplemented externally by adding the appropriate fertilizers. Moreover, constant agricultural cultivation in field may also cause depletion of certain elements which must be replenished in order to improve the fertility of soil. The important elements need to be replenished in crop fields are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These are grouped as nitrogenous fertilizers, phosphate fertilizers, and potash fertilizers. These are abbreviated as NPK. Common sources of NPK are ammonium chloride, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, bone meal, calcium magnesium phosphate and nitrate of soda. The common fertilizers that supplements NPK is nitrophosphate with potash in varying proportions. The percentage of nitrogen, phosphorus and water-soluble potassium are labeled on the bags as 17-18-9 or 15-15-15 and so on. The amount of fertilizer needed varies according to change in season, soil, nature of crop and other climatic conditions. Important Tips Woodward 1699, reported that plants grow better in muddy water as compared to fresh rain water. De Saussure, 1804, first of all demonstrated that plants obtain minerals from soil through root system. Liebig for the first time discovered the presence of elements in plant ash. Liebig's law of minimum states that the productivity of soil depends upon the proportionate amount of that essential element which is deficient in that soil. Tracer elements, these are radioactive isotopes of elements, which are used to detect various metabolic pathways in plants, e.g., C14, N15, P32, S35, etc. If dried plant parts are heated in silica crucible at 600 degrees Celsius, 
all organic substances vaporize and the remaining plant ash contains only inorganic substances or mineral elements. Aeroponics, growing plants in stands provided with fine mist of solution having all the required inorganic nutrients. Hydroponics developed by Jerish. Sodium, Na, regulates the transport of amino acids to the nucleus. Aluminium, Al, is accumulated in fern. Veladium, V, is required by alga cenodesmus. Selenium, Se, is required by atriplex and astragalus. Iodine is required by marine alga polysiphonia. The elements taken in the form of gas by prokaryotes only is nitrogen. Critical elements are the elements in which soil is generally deficient e.g. N, P, and K. These are given in form of fertilizers. In addition to 16 essential elements, some plants require some more essential micronutrient elements such as, I, silica, found in grasses and diatoms. 2. Sodium, found in halophytes. 3. Cobalt, found in ferns, e.g. lycopodium, taking part in growth. 4. Nickel, enzyme urease used it to hydrolyze urea by living organisms. In rhizobium cobalt play an important role in nitrogen fixation and is an essential constituent of vitamin B12. It is used in cancer therapy. Cytozyme is a water-soluble commercial preparation which contains essential mineral element for use as foliar spray. Cara disease of rice and white bud of maize is due to zinc deficiency. Dieback of citrus and reclamation disease of cereals and legumes and exanthema in fruit trees are due to deficiency of CU whiptail disease of cauliflower is caused by MO deficiency. The symptoms produced by the deficiency of mineral substances are called hunger sign. Mineral salt absorption is independent of water absorption. Maximum mineral salt absorption occurs by zone of elongation. No mineral salt absorption occurs by hair zone. Mineral salt absorption occurs directly by cells of epiblema and not by root hair. Mineral salts are absorbed mostly in form of ions i.e. anions and cations. Path of transport of mineral salts is xylem. Cytochromes act as anion carriers. Phytotron is the place or laboratory where plants can be maintained and studied under wide range of controlled conditions. Nifgene, nitrogen fixing gene is nifgene. A cluster of 18 genes, nifgene, encode the protein required for nitrogen fixation in club ziella. 4.10 Special Modes of Nutrition Nutrition is an important characteristic of living organisms. Plants need energy for its various life activities. Energy is provided by the oxidation of different foods. The method of taking in and synthesis of various types of foods by different plants and animals is called nutrition. Generally plants are autotrophic in their mode of nutrition, but there are some examples which are heterotrophic in their mode of nutrition. These plants are unable to manufacture their own food due to lack of chlorophyll or some other reasons, e.g., some bacteria, fungi, some bryophytes, pteridophytes and few angiospermic plants also, but special mention is of angiospermic plants. There are four special modes of nutrition. 1. Parasites, 2. Saprophytes, 3. Symbiotic plants, 4. Insectivorous plants, 1. Parasites, these plants obtain either their organic food prepared by other organisms or depend upon other plants only for water and minerals with the help of which they can synthesize their own food. The living organism from which the parasite obtains its organic food or water and minerals is called host. Any part of the body of parasite is modified into a special organ called hostorium which enters into the cells of host and absorbs food or water and minerals from the host. A plant parasite may live on the root or stem of the host plant partially or totally. The total parasites remain permanently attached to the host whereas the association of partial parasites is only short-lived. Accordingly, parasites can be classified into two categories, i. total parasites. 2. Semi-parasites or partial parasites. i. Total parasites, these plants never possess chlorophyll, hence they always obtain their food from the host. 
they may be attached to branches, stem, stem parasites, or roots, root parasites, of the host plants. A. Total stem parasite, Cuscuta is a rootless, yellow-colored, slender stem with small-scale leaves, which twines around the host. The parasite develops haustoria, small adventitious sucking roots, which enter the host plant forming contact with xylem and phloem of the host. It absorbs prepared food, water, and minerals from the host plant. B. Total root parasite. Total root parasites are common in the families like Orobunchaceae, Rafflesiaceae, Balanophoraceae, etc. Orobunch, Rafflesia, and Balanophora are some of the common root parasites. Orobunch is commonly known as broom rape. It has scale leaves and pinkish or bluish flowers. The tip of the root of parasite makes hostorial contact with the root of host and absorbs food from the host. Orobanch is usually parasitic upon brinjal, tobacco. In Rafflesia, stinking corpse lily, another root parasite, vegetative parts of the plant are highly reduced and represented by cellular filaments resembling fungal mycelium. These filaments get embedded in the soft tissue of the host while the flowers emerge out in the forms of buds. Balanophora occurs as a total stem parasite in the roots of forest trees. 2. Semi-parasite or partial parasite, such parasitic plants have chlorophyll and, therefore, synthesize their organic food themselves. But they fulfill their mineral and water requirements from their host plants. Like total parasites, they grow on the stem and roots of the host plants and can be grouped into following two categories, a. Partial stem parasites, the well-known example of partial stem parasite is Viscum album, mistletoe, which parasitizes a number of shrubs and trees. The mature plant of Viscum is dichotomously branched with green leaves borne in pairs attached on each node of stem. The shoots are attached to the host by means of haustoria. The primary haustoria reaches uptocortex of the host which runs longitudinally. It sends secondary haustoria which make connection with the xylem of the host and absorb water and minerals Lauren thus is another partial stem parasite. b. Partial root parasites, the common example of partial, semi-parasite, root parasite is sent alum album, sandalwood tree, which is an evergreen partial root parasite which grows in South India. It grows on the roots of Dalbergia siso, eucalyptus. Like other partial parasites, it also has green leaves and absorbs only minerals and water from the host plants. Similarly, striga on roots of sugarcane and thysum on the roots of grasses are other partial root parasites. 2. Saprophytes These plants live upon dead organic matter and are responsible for conversion of complex organic substances into simple inorganic substances, minerals, e.g., some bacteria, some fungi, yeast, mucus. Penicillium, agaricus, few algae, polytoma, few bryophytes, buxbaumia, hypnum, and splanchnum, few tereophytes, like botrychium, and some angiosperms, monotropa and neotia, also. Monotropa, commonly known as Indian pipe, lacks chlorophyll and is colorless or ivory white. It is found in Kasai Hills and in the dense forests of Shimla. Monotropa, though usually referred to as a saprophyte, actually gets its nourishment from fungal mycelium which surround its roots. Such association between roots of higher plants and fungi is known as mycorrhiza. Neotia, bird's nest orchid, grows in the humus-rich soil of the forests. It has very few reduced leaves and thick pale yellow stem. The roots lack root hairs and the nutrients are absorbed by mycorrhiza. 3. Symbiotic Plants Sometimes two different species of organisms spend much or all of their lives in close physical association, deriving mutual benefit. Such an association is known as symbiosis and each organism is known as symbiont. Symbiotic association is so close that symbionts appear to be different parts of the same plant. Symbiotic association may be between two higher plants or between a higher plant and a lower plant. Some common examples of symbiosis are described below. I. Lichens. Lichens is a special group of plants. When an algae and fungi live together and are mutually benefited, 
Algae provides food and fungi provides water minerals and protection of algae. The fungus component of the lichens, called mycobiont, is generally a member of Ascomycete or occasionally of Acidiomycete. The algal component of the lichen is known as Phycobiont and is generally a member of Chlorophyceae, e.g., Trebuxia, or Cyanophyceae, e.g., Nostoc, Gloeocapsa. 2. Mycorrhiza, it is a mutually beneficial association between a fungus and the root of higher plant. The fungus absorbs water, salts, from organic matter, and protects the plant from soil-borne pathogens. In return, it gets shelter and nourishment from the plant. In such association the fungal mycelium forms a mantle over the root surface and some of the hyphae penetrate between cortical cells and metabolites are transferred in both directions, i.e., from fungus to the root cells and vice versa. Usually the roots in the upper part of the soil, where organic matter is abundant, are mycorrhizal, and the roots penetrating deep in the soil are not associated with fungi. Generally, mycorrhizal roots have few or no root hairs. Water and minerals are absorbed by the fungus and passed on to the host. The fungus digests starch grains stored in the cortical cells of the host and uses the digested products in its own metabolism. In some plants the mycorrhizal association is essential for normal growth and development. For example, seedlings of orchids fail to survive if the soil is free from fungus. Pine seedlings grow poorly unless mycorrhizal fungi are introduced into the soil. 3. Root nodules of leguminosae, members of the subfamily Papillionaceae of the leguminosae, e.g., pea, beans, trifolium, harbor species of rhizobium, a nitrogen-fixing bacteria. The bacteria form nodules in the roots. They fix elemental nitrogen of the atmosphere and make it available to the plant in forms that can be utilized. In turn they derive food and shelter from the leguminous plant. 4. Myrmecophily, it is the symbiotic relationship between ants and some higher plants. The ants obtain food and shelter from the plant. They protect the plant, e.g., mango, from other animals. In Acacia spherocephala the stipules are hollowed to function as ant shelter. Leafla tips, belts corpus cles, and rachis, extrafloral nectaries, possess feeding materials. A higher plant which is benefited by association with ants is called myrmecophyte. The term myrmecophily is also used for pollination by ants. 4. Insectivorous plants these plants are autotrophic in their mode of nutrition but they grow in marshy or muddy soils, which are generally deficient in nitrogen and in order to fulfill their nitrogen requirement, these plants catch small insects. The organs and specially leaves of these plants are modified variously to catch the insects. These plants have glands secreting proteolytic enzymes which break down complex proteins into simple nitrogenous substances, which in turn are absorbed by these plants. Some of these plants are as follows, I, Drosera, Sundew, it is a herbaceous plant having spathulate or lunate leaves. The leaves are covered by glandular hair with a swollen tip. The gland secretes a sticky purple juice which shines like a dewdrop in bright light sunshine, hence the name Sundew. These long special hair are generally referred to as tentacles. When an insect alights on the leaf, the tentacles curve due to thick monasty. The insect is killed and its proteins are digested by pepsin hydrochloride. Similar tentacles are also found in Drosophilum. 2. Utricularia, bladderwort, it is submerged floating aquatic herb which lack roots. Some of the species of Utricularia also occur in moist soil. The leaves are dissected into fine segments and appear like roots. Some of the leaf segments are modified into pear-shaped sacs called bladders or utricles. The bladders are triangular or semicircular structures having a single opening guarded by a valve. There are numerous bristles near the mouth and digestive glands inside. The bladders show special trap mechanism. The valve of the bladder opens on the inner side. When small aquatic animal culls enter the bladder along with water current, they get trapped inside. Their proteins are digested enzymatically. When a bladder is full of undigested matter, it degenerates. 3. 
Nepenthes, pitcher plant, they are commonly found in tropical areas like Assam and Meghalaya, i.e. Nkaziana. In this plant the leaf base is winged, petiole is tendriller and the lamina is modified into pitcher. The pitcher fig has a distinct collar at the mouth and the apex is modified into the lid. The undersurface of the lid has alluring glands whereas the inner surface of pitcher is lined by numerous digestive glands and several downward directed hair. The lid attracts insects which slide down into the pitcher. The downward directed hair check their escape. The insect is killed and its proteins are digested by pepsin hydrochloride. Other insectivorous plants having leaf pitchers are Saracenia, Cephalotus, Heliamphora, etc. 4. Dionia, Venus flytrap, it is a small herbaceous plant found mainly in America. The plant has a rosette of radiating leaves. The petiole is winged and photosynthetic. The lamina is bilobed and the midrib acts like a hinge between the two lobes of the lamina. Each lobe has 15 to 20 trigger hairs or bristles. These hairs are very sensitive to nitrogenous substances. When an insect alights on the leaf and touches the sensitive hairs, the two lobes of lamina fold along the midrib. Thus the insect is trapped in between the lobes. Pepsin hydrochloride secreted by the digestive glands, present in the upper part of the lobes digests the insect. The simple digested substances are absorbed by the plant. Soon after the digested matter has been translocated to other parts of the plant, the lobes of the lamina reopen. V. Saracenia, pitcher plant, devil's boot, this pitcher plant is found in the temperate regions. It has a very reduced stem which bears a rosette of leaves. The leaves are modified into pitchers. It can easily be distinguished from Nepenthes on the basis of its trumpet-shaped sessile pitchers. Contrary to Nepenthes, the pitchers of Saracenia lack digestive enzymes and here the insects are decomposed by bacteria. 6. Pinguicula, butterwort, it is a herbaceous plant having a basal rosette of ovate leaves. The leaf margins are slightly curved in upward direction. The dorsal, upper, Surface of leaf has two types of glands stalked and sessile. The stalked glands secrete mucilage while the sessile glands secrete digestive enzymes. As soon as the insect sits on the leaf surface, it sticks to the mucilage secreted by stalked glands. Meanwhile the margins of the leaf roll inward due to stimulation received by the insect. Thus the insect gets leaf lamina enclosed within the leaf. The protein contents of the insect are digested by the enzymes secreted by the sessile glands. The leaf reopens when the stimulation is over. 7. Aldrovanda, water flea trap, it is also a rootless, submerged aquatic plant, bog plant, recalling the habit of utricularia. The leaves are bilobed with long petioles. There are five bristle-like outgrowths associated with the lamina. The leaf surface is covered by visit stalked glands. The two halves of the lamina rise upward on stimulation by an insect, the midrib acting as hinge. The proteins of the insect are digested enzymatically. Monotropa neotia agaricus. Symbiotic lichens mycorrhiza root nodules. Myrmecophily. Most green plants. Green sulfur bacteria. Purple sulfur bacteria. Monotropa neotia. Important tips term symbiosis was given by Deberry. Reflesia, largest flower in the world, was discovered by Sir Stamford Raffles from Java. Flower measures about a meter in diameter, about 11 kilograms in weight, smell is like rotten fish, pollination by elephants and found on roots of Vitus and Cissus. Sapria himalayensis, largest flower in India, measures 15 cm, 30 cm in diameter. Insectivorous plants are example of predation, i.e. first killing and then eating. Cephalotus, flycatcher. A deep-rooted carnivorous herb with a rosette of pitchers for trapping small animals. Cuscuta slash marble slash akashbal slash daughter, a dicot with no coaty lead on, some workers consider it to have a single coaty lead on. It is a total stem parasite but initially grows on soil. Dishidia, the pitcher is without lid and is used only for storing rainwater with some mud. 
Epiphytes are plants which live on other plants for space, shelter slash support, only. They are therefore, called space parasites bird of paradise flower is sterility origini.